Hi, welcome. Hello, thank you. <laughs> Good to see you again. Nice to see you again, and thank you for joining the conference. Um, so you're going to talk about um, Glacier Bay last year and your next sporting <laughs> Right. <laughs> you're going to talk beautiful. more about the business aspects, right? Um, you are um, product manager at Nexio, and uh, I was really happy to see when you were uh, uh, your, the outline of your presentation because you're going to have like a rapid fire. This is how we can use AI <laughs> as product manager. So looking forward to it. The stage is yours. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, yeah, so as you said, my name is Garrett Wynn. I've been a technical writer, though, for over 20 years, and I've uh, been working at Nexio uh, for about three years now. Let's see. Uh, my current job title, though, is, as you said, product manager of developer experience. All right. <clears throat> So, uh, in order to make sure we get a lot of alphabet soup, I titled <laughs> my presentation crazily. Um, so, I know it's been a long day for many of us, uh, and I want to do uh, more rapid fire stuff, but as, and I cannot see questions as they, maybe I'm going to bring the, the uh, other screen over here. Okay so that I can see any questions that pop up. So if you have any questions, please uh, you know, put them in the chat and I'll try to make this a little bit more interactive rather than just rapid fire. Um, so I was brought on to Nexio as a technical writer to document the APIs, um, but I was also responsible for the dev, the dev portal and for improving the experience of, uh, of using our APIs in general. So. I'm sure many of you have experienced something similar. So even if you're not a product manager, you wear lots of hats. And uh, I expect that then some of these points I'll be covering will you know, be helpful, hopefully, to more than just those who do product management specifically. Um, uh, we're going to you know, cover the, these points here for the next 10-ish minutes. Um, and, and I found and learned over the course of my time here that PMs are always struggling to find time between never-ending meetings, uh, documentation, prioritization, and then more meetings. So we're going to start with the meeting side of things. Um, it often seems like PM stands for plentiful meetings, and we just can't get out of them. So taking this now to AI, how can AI help? Um, AI can't really go to meetings on our behalf yet, um, but it can do a few things to help manage them and make life a bit easier, I found. So have you been to a meeting where um, lots of great discussion happened, things were agreed on, uh, and then nothing came of it? Or how about being so busy taking notes in a meeting that you miss half of what was said or that you're not able to actually present your own thoughts or ideas? Um, or when someone remembers something from a meeting differently than you. AI can help with all of these kind of things. So have, do you have AI transcribing your meetings? Hopefully in a little bit uh, more current system than this. Um, but having AI do that helps me pay attention to what's being said and participate in the meeting more uh, because I don't have to worry about missing something or writing anything down myself. Um, AI can also summarize the meeting for me. Here's an example. Um, we've been using Zoom's feature uh, for a while at, the com at this company, but uh, there are several options out there. I did a quick search, found one called TLDV. Um, I have no association with the company. I don't even know how good it is, but it does the similar kind of thing. And I think a quick search would find a lot of those. Um, but the great thing is that I can I get an email at the end of the, the meeting and telling me exactly what happened, what went on that uh, I can then use later if I need to or send a recap to interested parties. Um, but the feature I really like is that AI pays attention to what's been said and how it's been going and they actually makes a list of action items that uh, came out of that meeting and so then I can track them easier. Um, and those are the things that usually gets lost at least uh, in meetings that I've been in in the past. 
All right. Um, so not only does this work for your standard internal meetings, um, but you can use it with any meeting um, you are in. How about user interviews or meetings with customers or partners? Or, you know, how powerful is it to show developers or other technical writers um, a playback of important points or pull out exact quotes um, to use in a report or a user story? Um, and I, uh, I'm not going to show this, but you some AI tools could even take that transcript you have and turn it into a video that you then show, um, which is an interesting uh, way to go. All right. So AI can help in our meetings, um, but then it can also, uh, besides meetings, PMs need to communicate a lot. And AI is here to help with that as well. So um, <laughs> I have an email that I have to send to my sales team at the start of every week. I have to take the data from our developer portal um, and boil it down to a few takeaway, takeaways or potential about potential new customers or um, helping existing customers. And I used to do that all on my own. Um, but now I use AI to do this. It is a great quote. Um, the uh, AI um, helps me get all the data together. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. And then I have, I have AI look at this data uh, that, you know, like from a spreadsheet and then generate a text of an email. This is um, all generated from my AI interface um, and does a pretty good job of pulling out meaning from the data that we have and saves me about two to three hours of work um, per week on trying to get this together. Um, it looks for, uh, I've trained it over the course of time to look for patterns, to understand what it's looking at, and then some things that might stand out. Um, this is uh, not necessarily just one shot, but a back and forth. And uh, I think this will, more people who will talk about prompt engineering and so forth, so I'm not gonna, talk about that specifically, um, but there are ways to get it to work this way. All right. All right. Um, you can also train the AI to use the exact tone you want, help you draft an email or a letter announcement. Um, I had another product manager come to me who uh, wanted to write up a, an email to that was going out to our, our customers and partners. Um, that was a little... Um, uh, difficult. <laughs> uh, we wanted to make sure we we worded it in a in a great way. And the first thing I did was take it into AI and say, "Hey, here, help us do this." And that was a great starting point, and it provided the information we needed uh, and focused on um, the stuff that that we really cared about uh, in a way that would be less worrisome for the people who are getting it. Uh, to put it uh, without being too specific. All right, uh, let's move on. Um, also, um, PMs need to do a lot of different, um, you know, we get lots of different emails and communications. Um, I use AI to summarize all the things, um, I, it, whether it's internal documents, competitor websites, YouTube videos, um, data, just give me the short version and so I can move on to the higher value tasks. Um, and uh, I don't necessarily have to read everything to get the gist of it. Uh, if it's interesting or I need it to know more, then of course I delve into it. But it's a great way to save some time on reading through an article or whatever it is. All right, no questions, just moving right along. <clears throat> Besides meetings, um, we have to do a lot of different kind of research. Um, I've been using AI in a variety of uh, ways that I previously would have just searched the internet for. For example, when I was first told about my new title uh, beginning of this year, um, I opened ChatGPT and started a conversation to ask it to prepare a set of lessons for me to learn about being a product manager. But instead of just reading uh, the information like I would with a regular um, internet search, 
as able to go through the lessons and ask questions as I went. Um, so it's like having a mentor or a tutor right there to give me all the information all the information I need and things that I didn't necessarily understand um, at the level that I could understand it um, to focus on. So uh, research uh, in that way was really great. Um, and then I've done similar things about learning about an industry um, or for uh, market research and competitive an analysis. Um, I've even created my own um, GPTs, uh, including uh, one who is an expert product manager who's very familiar with the industry that I work in. And so that's helped me to ask questions and focus and, and learn and make plans and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to go over some of those things in the next few slides. All right. I feel like I've been going a mile a minute. Any questions so far? None in the chat. All right. Here we go. All right, I don't expect you to read all of this, um, but these are some prompts I've used for doing market and competitor research because um, that a product manager does that a lot, right? And so the I've been trying to get information and, and learn about competitors and so forth. Um, I, the first one actually was really useful um, for me um, to get an idea of maybe how we might want to improve our developer portal, um, what kind of innovations are happening, what kind of uh, things uh, in competitors are they doing and so forth. Um, and like I said, prompt engineering is a whole other topic that I'll let others talk about, but um, the questions we ask can help us to then generate, get information. It's a whole new way of doing research of learning uh, about stuff and you don't have to just take the information you can question it um, so you can avoid some of that you know the hallucination kind of stuff and uh, use um, use the ai to help you get the information you need all right ux to dx Although uh, user, user experience is not typically in the realm of a product manager, we still need to be aware of the developer experience, of course, especially a, a product manager over the developer portal and make plans to improve that experience. So um, we can use AI to help us in that case. Um, the first level of this uh, for PMs is giving the AI information about our company, our industry, customers, maybe from that market research we've done, maybe from transcripts of user interviews, um, and then have it help you create a persona for a developer user of the portal. Uh, and then, so I hope that makes sense. You give the AI, you tell it all of the stuff and say, hey, here, create this persona for me or help me create a persona based on all of this information, kind of conglomerated into one. All right, after that, we use AI to help create questionnaires uh, for product interviews, ask for suggestions of questions even, uh, maybe uh, you know, make sure you provide context uh, for what you're looking for, but then um, you, know, you can provide the questions you wanna ask to the AI, ask it how it's, you know, if there's anything you're missing or if there might be better ways of asking the question to get the results you're looking for. Another way I've used it is to load up some stats into the AI and have that AI determine the typical th pass through the dev portal from initial discovery through successful API integration. And then this helped me look for pain points and opportunities for improvement that I can attribute to a specific persona. But where this really took things to another level for me was feeding my AI a persona and then asking that persona questions. Um, this is like user research light. Um, it can help you delve into pain points or things that you might not have thought of previously. Um, you can use the questionnaires or other types of surveys um, to see how a customer might answer or how they might react. Obviously, still need to take it with a grain of salt, but uh, 
it can be a really useful starting point, uh, especially when I've been unsure of where I'm going to go or what I need to do. Um, and I begin using that to do, you know, the things that I've already talked about. Um, the great thing is that I, uh, because we have it as a, a team uh, chat GPT um, system, I can share it with other product managers in the company and even the developers, the other technical writers, and we can all interact with that persona um, and uh, use it all together, right? So if there's a user story or a, a feature that we're trying to develop or whatever, that we can then ask that persona questions about it and, and get kind of immediate feedback, at least from a, a AI perspective. Um, this is really new for us, um, so I don't have any, I don't know how it will go, um, but I am excited about the prospect of this and what it can do for us. All right, looking forward. Uh, another big part of a PM's job uh, is the aspect of planning. Uh, first, we can use AI to craft a vision statement uh, for our developer portal. Um, this is one of the first lessons AI gave me about being a product manager. Um, this example is pretty generic, but the lesson included lots of tips for identifying key themes and business goals as part of that process. Um, we already talked about product and competitor or market and competitor research, but you can use that information uh, as you work on planning for improvements to the dev portal. Ask your AI to suggest features or products based on uh, past usage and actions, you know, look in the past. And then, you know, AI is not great at fortune telling or at uh, prioritization of your issues, but it can help figure out potential problems or conflicts that you might have and help you identify where to look for them as you decide on the priorities yourself. So take that information and then ask, uh, tell your AI your conclusions, your insights, ask it to look for your blind spots, your biases. What am I missing here? What am I being overly optimistic about? Um, and then another thing I've done is have AI help me with uh, creating user stories and acceptance criteria. So give your AI uh, the acceptance criteria, have it converted into, you know, the format you need. Product managers talk about Gherkin format um, or separate scenarios that they want with the acceptance criteria um, and helps break it down. Um, with a user story, um, have it help you write a, a user story with uh, acceptance criteria for, say, like, hey, I need a sign-up page that supports both ordinary email sign-up and sign-up with Google and uh, take what it gets and and ask it questions. The back and forth is really the important part about that and really help delve out or delve into the user story. Um, even defining an MVP, I used AI to help guide the process of, divine, of defining this minimum viable product for our dev portal or for a feature in the dev portal. Um, you can discuss with the AI how to identify the core features and functionalities that deliver the most value and enable this you know, iterative development and, and feedback. Um, and it helped me, it actually went down and created, you know, here's the epics you might need, here's the, the user stories, individual user stories, the tasks, and so forth. All right. Whew. Oh, almost at my time. All right. So <laughs> AI is great with metrics as well. Um, I'm going to just speed really a lot through this. Um, I've been using it to help with it since last year. Um, we gather a lot different, all different areas. Um, usually I can use it to look for uh, patterns and concerns. So I asked, I gave it some data and it found the, this is what it came up with as far as, you know, things that are good, things where we might be able to improve. Okay, so I'm just gonna speed through these because you don't really care, but you can do it. Uh, you don't care about ours. All right, um, uh, or what if you don't know what metrics to use? Ask AI, what are some, what could be success metrics, L1, L2 metrics for a dev portal? Um, and it gave me a great list of, of answers for this. And then uh, like this. Uh, and then uh, just a lot of different data. All right, I'm going to move on. To, <laughs> already over time. OK. Um, as the product manager of the dev portal, I'm concerned with you know end-to-end -end experience and not just when the developer comes to my 
site or tries to use our APIs. So from AI help with meetings, emails, research, personas, planning, data analysis, I've gotten so much time back that I can focus on what really matters and coordinate with other departments in ways that help our customers. Ta-da. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Gareth. Yes. Um, one of the most voted questions is the tooling that you use for the examples, but I'm going to ask you, please, that you will answer that in the chat case by case, please. Sure. And now I would just like to ask you, when do you decide not to use AI? Hi, Mike. Um, <laughs> and, oh, uh, when not to. How do you <laughs> confirm that it's a hallucination or not? Um, mostly common sense, um, but... I think I use it all the time. Uh, when do I not use it? It's it's hard. Uh, I use it in place of search now. Instead of searching the internet, I use AI. Uh -huh. um, and I mean, there's a whole thing. I think the prompt engineering is a whole is a big part of not of knowing that it's not a hallucination. Um, and I see other speakers are going to get into that, so I'll I'll leave that to them to answer. But I'll be happy to answer more questions about that as well. Mm -hmm. um, of okay. course. Thank you very much. See you in the lounge. All right. Thank you.